Okay, so we look at Warhammer Vermintide 2 at 21 by 9. I never got to spend time with the first game, and this follow-up has also kept rather low on the radar for most people, though actually it's selling bloody well on Steam right now. It's not quite a fully-fledged massive title, something reflected in its lower price tag, but with its Left 4 Dead level style and wide range of depth to characters and weapons, it is a wonderful experience. I got a solid bit of time with the beta, and it showed off a game with tons of promise, and I'm very happy to say the beta was a very true representation of the final game. But anyway, first, the 21 by 9 support. It may be 2018, but ultra-wide support is still far from a given in any title, but Farshark have thought of us here. Gameplay correctly shows off more on the sides of the screen at all moments, with no stretching or pop-in issues. There is a gorgeously huge FMV slider, which will easily mean that you can get the perfect view of your preference. I stuck at 90. The HUD scales to the sides of the screen, however you actually can choose whether you want it to remain more centered, just change the setting in the menus. Always nice to have the option, as I know some people would rather not have the elements pushed to the sides. Screen effects all stretch to use the entire screen space, which works well. There is a single 16x9 with black barred pre-rendered cutscene at the very start of the game, explaining the backstory, but the rest of the cutscenes are in-game, ultra-wide moments. Unfortunately, they do have small black bars on the top and bottom, which always looks silly at 21 by 9 Wish they could be removed, but that's a small gripe. The main menu is ultra-wide, and in-game menus are just pop-up menus center screen, so they look perfect at 21 by 9 And finally, the loading screens are a mix of a loading icon at 21 by 9 but the image locked at 16 by 9 with black bars. Performance here is extremely good. It's a great looking game with gorgeous landscapes, huge hordes of enemies, and lots of blood and gore to go with it. Regardless though, even on higher settings, and that includes increasing settings beyond native ultra settings to a custom high point like the blood visuals, I was able to maintain an FPS number in the 80s at pretty much every moment on a GTX 1080 Ti at 3440x1440. There are a wide range of graphic settings to choose from, so you can customize your performance to suit your system very nicely, and there was no FPS stuttering issues or freezing problems that I ever encountered. It's a very well optimized title. General PC support is also just as great, with full controller support, surround sound support, though this didn't actually quite feel perfect. It feels like voices use surround sound, but the music seems to stick to stereo, not quite sure why. You can fully rebind your keyboard and mouse inputs, and yeah, there's just a plethora of other options. Really lovely. Connections to other players seems to be mostly reliable with little to no visible latency, though they have said that they are bringing dedicated servers soon. This would be really nice because I did get one occurrence of the host has left the session and then I was kicked from the game, and I did get one moment where the game suddenly became extremely laggy before ending the mission abruptly, but yeah, for the most part, connections seem to be well handled. So gameplay wise, if you've played Left 4 Dead, you'll have a perfect idea of how each mission plays out. You and a group of three other players work your way from one point to another along a completely linear path, fighting enemies along the way. There are lots of different levels to fight through, and each time you run a level, the enemy encounters are usually somewhat different. So you might be swamped by a horde of enemies in one location on the first run, but the second time you end up having a different set of enemies in the same location. It does a decent job at making reruns of levels still engaging. There are 13 levels to play throughout, each requiring you to complete the previous one to unlock the next one. Each is pretty long, taking about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. They all form part of the story to what is happening in the world, so if you're interested in that extra depth to the game, it is somewhat there. Graphically, each level is gorgeous. From huge underground cave networks where dwarves lived to towering forests, it is a wonderful world to fight through. The number of maps and variety to their design is good, however I would love to see the number of missions increase in the future, as rerunning the same level 10-20 times can get a bit dull, but for the price to content level, it is not lacking in stuff to do. Now you can choose to specify what map you want to play, through the custom search option or just you can hit quick play. There is an incentive to just hit quick play, as they say you can get slightly better chances of better loot, clearly this is to try and ensure lobbies get filled instead of having tons of half filled ones, but thankfully the option to choose what you want to play is there, which means you aren't forced to luck out on getting the map you want. Also, finding a lobby to play with was very easy, I never had much difficulty in quickly jumping into a new lobby with three others and starting a new game very fast. In the cases where we missed one or two people, their places were just filled with AI partners whom I'm pleased to say pull their weight and aren't a problem to play with. 
you have lots of characters to play as, with a core four completely different ones, with each of them having three different versions of themselves. But I count these variations as kind of their own characters because they provide significantly enough different attributes to one another that they can stand alone as unique. Each character has a passive and career skill as a standard, however customization within the game is expansive. There are tons of weapons, consumables, cosmetics, powers, etc. to really change how you play, how your character works, where their strengths and weaknesses lie. It's really lovely. You unlock these upgrades through a loot box system, however you can only unlock these loot boxes within game actions. No real money as far as I know. Now, I know, your first reaction will be like mine, what the hell, no to loot boxes. However, I saw it pointed out that, really, this is no different to how you get random loot from a chest at the end of a boss fight in a plethora of other games. Just because it's designed in this far too infamous loot box visual, it does make you jump to the conclusion this is horrendous, but in reality, it's not different to normal, and I can certainly say it works well. I haven't had any issues with how the system works so far. I've always unlocked something of interest every time I finish a level, which means my playstyle is continually evolving and changing to incorporate the new unlocks. Yes, there are duplicates, however there is a system for melting the stuff down and crafting your own specific items. Each character levels up individually, and with higher levels comes new versions of each character, like I mentioned, and it is also how special traits and powers are unlocked. It does mean that you might want to focus on a single character instead of swapping between them all the time if you want to get to the higher level abilities sooner. I myself couldn't do this, I just enjoy swapping between different characters every time to get the variety. The difficulty of levels also seems to slightly vary not only on the difficulty rating you choose, there are four tiers, but it also appears to vary on the level of team members. I found that if we were all high level characters, the enemies seem to somewhat get harder. Now I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. That said, the game isn't easy. It may appear that gameplay is simple, just hitting, blocking, shooting, but the reality is, to be great at the game, you need to know how to use what abilities, how to counter all kinds of enemies, and how to work well as a team. Certainly, if you end up wandering off alone, you're going to die very quickly. But yes, even on regular difficulty, we would struggle to complete levels, let alone on the hardest difficulty, a very daunting task. It seems you'll work your way up through the difficulty levels as your weapons get more powerful. Enemy types are, thankfully, nicely varied, with a large array of heavy hitting, immobilizing, fast, small, huge creatures to tackle and work together to defeat. Boss fights are challenging, and you really need to work well as a team to break their immensely heavy hits and health. A few last points, if you played the beta, the great news is all progress was pulled across, which was lovely, no time wasted there, and the music is great, it helps get the heart pumping when in the midst of tense battle. With these kinds of games, I always come back to wishing there was a 4 player, or at least a 2 player split screen co-op. Certainly with the quality of optimization here and the power of most of our PCs, we could easily run it, it's just a shame that we're never going to get that option. All in all, I'm loving this game. It's a quality piece of work that, whilst on the surface appears very hack and slash, actually has a beautiful depth to it. You will easily get hours of playtime out of this, and no doubt will continue to return to it in the future with lots more intense bloody action to be had. I'm going to give it a WAF score of 4. It is oh so nearly perfect for us. I totally recommend picking this game up. You'll not be disappointed. So I hope that gives you some information that the game runs at 21x9. Give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21x9, head over to my channel, the WAF website. Hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description. And Amazon affiliate links are there too. See you later.
the warlord's nest. Dwarf, heal up. Well, let's hope this works. Keep your eyes open, Dringbarazi. There'll be more Raki and Kazaki to come. No, sir. Assassins. Sterek, can't take your heads. Don't 
I hear the pale queen. You've looked better, Fruber. Seek. The weak help you back.